weird and wonderful introduction. I think I entered the stage a bit prematurely there, so excuse that awkwardness. Um, yes, uh, my talk is Going Small to Grow Big. And um, before I start, I just wanted to say thank you very much uh, for having me to speak today. Um, seeing WordCamp Cape Town grow from strength to strength year on year is hugely exciting, and for us as we seems to be a part of that, um, we're very proud of it. Um, yeah, to Hugh and the organizing committee, um, to the guys who are up till four o'clock in the morning last night at the Dublin are entertaining some of the, the speakers this morning. Um, yeah, a lot of work goes into these events, and um, yeah, thanks to you guys. Um, so my theme is quite all-encompassing, um, quite a, quite a multifaceted topic, um, and sort of quite an obvious mantra, I guess, but I just want to address it from our perspective and our learnings um, at WE Themes, um, and talk a bit about what I believe to be op opportunities now in 2014. Um, and to lead into that, um, I thought it would be good to revisit a presentation that AD, uh, my previous co-founder of Woo Themes, gave at WordCamp 2011. Um, who was at WordCamp 2011? A few of you. Um, yeah, there, AD gave a talk about the WordPress ecosystem, and it's quite interesting reminiscing and looking back at where we were then and sort of where we are now. And um, in it, he earmarked a few opportunities uh, that he believed existed then, um, but as you can see, the sort of the big commercial areas of WordPress were around theming and sort of custom development. But um, opportunities definitely growing in plugins and SaaS and, and in hosting. Um, he also looked at where we were as a company, Woo Themes, and Themes um, was where we were and all this opportunity that we had and. Um, yeah, that talk in 2011 in September was, I think, about two weeks prior to launching WooCommerce, which has completely changed every level of our business. And that little WooCommerce pink bubble there um, pretty much makes up 85, 90% of our revenues now and our direction as a company. Um, where are we today as a community, as the WordPress ecosystem? Um, if we're looking at stats, the WordPress repository, which houses all the, the free plugins and themes, sits with around 33,996 plugins and 2,778 themes. Um, looking at those stats and thinking back to my own journey in WordPress, um, the WordPress theme repository was where everyone sort of turned to. Um, <coughs> plugins weren't nearly as big. Uh, but it shows how the market has matured. Um, if we look at the commercial space, it's good to reflect on Envato's growth and their sort of marketplaces within plugins and themes. And, and there you see the stats slightly different. There's uh, far more, um, well, there's 4,616 themes, so more commercial themes available than free ones on the WordPress repo, and 3,000 plugins on Code Canyon. So it sort of leads into my topic of um, going small to grow big and opportunities in 2014. And a good reference for my talk was an article that Envato published on the inside.envato.com blog, um, which spoke about the state of WordPress, I think it was a couple months ago. And one of their quotes, when WordPress plugins first launched on Code Canyon, they sold only 2% of the volume of the themes. Today they sell 40% of the volume with almost one plugin sold for every two WordPress themes. So it shows that sort of fundamental shift that's happening. You still get the kitchen sink themes that uh, do just about everything that you can buy for $30. Um, but we're also seeing a maturing market, people understanding that the themes, in our opinion, should be the aesthetics, um, cater for the aesthetics and leave the, the heavy functionality to plugins where they're, they're the most scalable. If we look at one of the graphs from that article, you'll see that their best sellers and incredible numbers that they're doing. Uh, Avada has sold 68,000 units, um, and that's a small, a tiny agency uh, making some serious money from one of those kitchen sink themes, um, but do it beautifully in a, a very polished template. 
Um, number two is also a theme, but three and four is where you're seeing the growth of, of plugins. Um, on, on Envato and sort of speaking more generally, you know, the state of, of the ecosystem. One of the points I really want to drive home is, you know, the market is quite saturated these days and to enter and to, to have the overnight success of yesteryear um, is more difficult. Um, so designing for niche needs and markets is where we're seeing a real traction and, um, yeah, a, a su sustainable business. And, and um, whilst you can go out and and build brand new plugins and themes, you're competing with a hell of a lot of others that have probably done exactly what you're doing. And I guess this sort of leads on from what Maddie spoke about and you know, doing things right, um, but embracing the existing markets and leveraging them. And one of those ways of doing that, I believe, um, is through child themes. So looking at you know, those top themes on Envato, looking at you know, the big commercial theme companies around the world, um, really leveraging what they've already created. They've got proven uh, markets and audience willing to spend money um, and just capitalizing on that. Um, that's how we started out. Um, we leveraged existing audiences more than markets, but um, our strategy was to collaborate with as many big name um, designers, uh, web designers back in 2007, 2008, um, and it was sort of the very early days of Twitter and but they had massive blog followings and, and we collaborated with them because we knew they were amazing designers but also it was sort of our way of getting into those audiences and sort of trying to to become industry leaders in WordPress theme design uh, through the credibility that they brought. So some examples um, web savvy marketing uh, I heard Rebecca Gill speak at WordCamp Chicago earlier this year and she spoke about their journey from being a web design agency and, and uh, building WordPress templates for clients um, into sort of the theme shop space and, and their learnings um, are quite amazing and, and definitely worth um, looking that talk up on WordPress TV. But um, they've made a business out of building child themes for the Genesis framework um, and yeah, creating what I guess are quite simple themes and quite generic in their look, but by um, using AdWords and um, cleverly targeting specific audiences, um, largely through their demos, from what Rebecca said, um, they used stock library imagery specific for hair salons and then gone after keywords and targeted hair salon WordPress themes and, and dentistry, um, and this is chiropractors. Um, but all sorts of, you know, quite simple themes, but targeting very specific niches and having great success by doing that. Um, another area is the add-ons market, and this is just blowing up at the moment. And obviously, I'm speaking from my experience with WooCommerce and and the growth we've experienced. Um, now powering about 18% of all e-commerce sites online outside of WordPress, but. Um, that's down to a few factors and, and largely down to the freemium model, which again, Maddie's already addressed. But um, yeah, leveraging existing market uh, within the plugin space. Um, you know, there are plugins that are breaking out and, and becoming fully fledged platforms on top of a platform um, and jumping on board and trying to extend that in many wild and innovative ways um, in specific countries for specific niche markets is huge potential. So with us, you know, going back to our philosophy um, of freemium, the extension model has helped us keep that core lean um, and clean. And you know, we we concentrated all our attentions on building what we believe to be sort of the best user experience in terms of getting your products online, whether they be physical, digital, affiliated, or even time-based products now, and just opening up. Um, our offering by sort of really embracing open source in the GPL and you know putting our platform on, on GitHub and inviting contributors and, and creating entrepreneurial opportunity uh, for the developers that build for us. Um, yeah, and I guess you know when deciding what should be going into core, 
verse, what should be built as an extension. Um, Mike Jolly um, provided a little quote here. If the feature is for a paid or external service, or if it's a niche, basically if a feature isn't necessary, necessarily needed to run a store successfully, it justifies an extension. That goes for gateways and other region-specific features, such as tax handling. So there's plenty of opportunity in that extension model, and it's not just in WooCommerce, and I don't want this just to be a plug for WooCommerce, um, but WP Job Manager, that's actually built by our lead developer, um, Mike Jolly, of WooCommerce, and completely standalone product. Um, we're not affiliated with it at all, but he's replicated that exact same sort of offering, that, uh, that platform that he built with WooCommerce um, for a job board, uh, a WP Job Manager, and this launched in May 2014, and it's a job listing plugin, which is probably a perfect example of something suitable for freemium because there's so many niche types of um, recruitment that can be plugged on top of this board. And yeah, looking at how that has grown in such a short time frame, because again, he's embraced open source and uh, the, the freemium model. He's now got, um, I think, seven developers building and selling themes and plugins for WP Job Manager. Um, and one of those themes being um, Jobify, which has sold 3,309 copies on Theme Forest, which I think equates to around $190,000. Um, one of our developers at WooThemes, at WooThemes we really try and encourage um, sort of the entrepreneurial heart within our staff, and, and Remy Corson, um, probably not how you pronounce it because he's French, um, <laughs> He's one of our support ninjas and he's built some extensions for us, but he's also built some for WP Job Manager. And he created a, a form editor um, when uploading your CV. Obviously, there's lots of specific niche cases as to how you want to do that. And um, he's built this form editor and he sells around 30 copies a month and it has generated around $5,000 uh, since launch. Um, so, you know, whether you're building this out for clients first. Um, there's an opportunity to then launch that as an add-on um, on an official market or on Theme Forest. Um, there's plenty of opportunity. The most popular official add-on um, on WP Job, Job Manager sells around 100 copies a month, um, and combined add-ons bring in a total of around $20,000 a month uh, for Mike Jolly and the developers around it. Another example, Ninja Forms. Again, some of our developers build add-ons for this and make a nice bit of money on the side um, by tapping into this market and extending it further. There's Easy Digital Downloads, um, which is another amazing e-commerce platform focused more on digital products, and they've got a thriving third-party ecosystem uh, with guys making serious money. One of those plugins that I spoke about earlier on the top sellers list on Envato is Visual Composer and um, that's a plugin um, and that you can see its growth since 2013 and the moment they introduced add-ons how sort of their growth has skyrocketed which has been great for the developer himself but also for all the developers around him that now can make income of his success. So our advice, if not obvious already, is to build a developer ecosystem around your product. Um, we've got around 40 extension developers on our payroll at the moment. And last month, I think it was about $200,000 went off to these guys uh, for the work that they've done. Um, so we've really tried to create the, the infrastructure for them to innovate um, with APIs and um, the REST API, I'm not a technical person. Maddie is the best person to speak about all the amazing code enhancements we're making, but the API really allows for huge opportunity to, to read and write info, um, information to and from your WooCommerce platform, hooks and filters, and yeah, GitHub access. And, and uh, WooCommerce on, on GitHub has, um, how many is this? 291 active contributors on the last release. Um, it's been forked a hell of a lot of times, and um, yeah, we're seeing amazing innovation, and uh, we can iterate quite quickly because we've got this developer e ecosystem that's bought into our platform and incentivized to make it better. 
Uh, one of those companies is Prosper, uh, Pros Press, um, and this is Brent Shepherd, who's an Australian guy now living in San Francisco, and he built what is still our most popular extension, uh, WooCommerce subscriptions. So our top selling extension is built by a third party, and he's managed to extend his team um, to four people. So he was a one-man shop, and now he's got four people building plugins for WooCommerce. Um, and yeah, WooCommerce subscriptions outperforms even our, our top selling themes, Canvas. Um, and he's working on some amazing new extensions now, one of them being One Page Checkout, which we hope to launch um, in the next few weeks. Um, so yeah, you know, just allowing these guys the opportunity um, to really innovate. Skyverge is another one of those companies, two guys that met online, I think. Um, and started a company um, creating WooCommerce extensions. They're now a team of six. They helped us build our API. Um, they also are official partners on our WooCommerce iOS app. Um, they really you know, grabbed the ball by its horns and, and have, um, you know, they didn't ask permission to do all this stuff. They just really innovated and, um, and it's proven hugely successful for them. Um, these guys, Graflow, Rob and Nick, who are here today and sharing our office. Um, it's exciting to see sort of the, these new um, types of businesses outside of the, the traditional extension model, um, building services that complement and extend um, what we do, and, and they're building out a product recommendations engine, and, and um, we're hugely excited that they've chosen WooCommerce as their platform of choice to launch with. Um, and super clever data scientists who um, have built their own APIs and managed to take a whole bunch of information and provide really valuable insights as to the customers on your shop front and uh, putting the right products in front of them and increasing your conversions. And it's really, we're, we're the guinea pig, we're using this on wethemes.com and we really see big potential in these sort of offerings. Um, yeah, just to show you how, how big our platform has, has become as a result of what I've said, um, embracing the GPL. Um, we've got 1,379 themes supporting WooCommerce on ThemeForest and 442 WooCommerce plugins. Um, and these are guys, you know, making good money. We don't, we're not affiliated with these at all. Um, they took the initiative. Um, and what's hugely exciting is, you know, we were a theme company competing with all sorts of other commercial theme providers and now all those theme providers are building out um, and supporting our plugin which is indirectly helping us grow. Um, again this is from that same blog post on Envato showing sort of the rise of um, some of the, the top plugin categories and one of those being WooCommerce. Um, so yeah, child themes, um, add-ons are huge markets but yeah they're obviously also other opportunities um, and I think you know one of the the reasons behind some of the su successes of the the new innovators is building products that don't necessarily compete but complement what already exists and um, not trying to build a theme that um, completely hijacks, hijacks a user from some other theme but um, extends it and there's cool uh, innovation happening in, in a visual uh, content builders um, and just to highlight a couple of them there's ASOP uh, which started I think as a Kickstarter project um, can be used with any theme um, and allows you to create amazing one page layouts um, all within your post and page editor there's Velocity Page built by Mark Jackwith uh, one of the lead WordPress developers um, and yeah it's just really exciting to see how people are really thinking outside of the box now um, yeah, providing such intrinsic value to WordPress users that your competition have no option but to support your product is you know, our sort of big learning and better yet they, they market that fact. Um, going back to that list of, of best sellers, um, those three themes all support WooCommerce um, so they're helping grow our platform. Um, Another opportunity is just open, opening doors to new markets and I like to use this example that I think Joel first shared with us, uh, our business development uh, lead at, at WooThemes and, 
and there are 1,895 sites in South Africa that are using WooCommerce at the moment to power their e-commerce. Um, and if we look at the other big hubs in Africa, you know, the biggest economy being Nigeria only has 70 sites. This was a few months ago. But um, 110 sites in Kenya, 100 sites in the rest of Africa it just shows how much opportunity we have within our continent, within our country. And that all boils down to developers, hopefully some of you sitting in the audience who who help extend and open the doors for us um, and obviously be incentivized to do such. But um, yeah, in South Africa, we've opened up with uh, a few payment gateways and uh, fulfillment centers and, and uh, postal services. Having those integrations means we get more people using the platform. And we need to do that more in these other countries around the world. So I think um, I've rushed through this quite quickly. And uh, I think we've got a bit of time for, for Q&As, but I wanted to keep it uh, short and punchy. So that's me. Done. Thank you very much. Awesome. Mine time. Cool. Do we have any questions for, Thank you. for Thank Mark? You. Um, which countries are downloading your, um, most of your themes and how do they compare to South Africa? Um, themes specifically or all our, all our products? Um, America, all your products, sorry. Yeah, America is by far um, our, our top sellers. Well, you know, our, our customer base is I think around 80-85% uh, from the United States. There's Europe, um, Australia. Um, we're trying to break more into India. We've got huge amounts of traffic coming to our site from there. Um, but yeah, trying to convert those users. But America is largely where sort of our focus is, um, just following the revenues. Uh, any more questions for Mark? Um, it, you know, Invata and Code Canyon are about to change their support policy and their structure for uh, uh, plugin long, uh, future support and longevity. Um, do you think that's going to change the marketplace a lot and uh, increase earnings or change earnings a lot? Definitely. I think um, you know we made the move a little over a year ago, um, bringing in our licensing system and. Obviously our products embrace GPL, but we need to be sustainable and there was a horrible, unsustainable advertising model of selling unlimited um, installations, unlimited support, lifetime updates. And I mean, that's really crippled a lot of businesses and we've seen a lot of business go, businesses go out of business because of that. And um, yeah, licensing and, and premium support, I mean, that's always been the one drawback about the Envato marketplaces, you can pick up products really cheap, but uh, will the developers be around to support you? You know, we, it's one of our, our proudest selling points is, you know, we really nurture support and customer support is one of our key offerings um, that justifies that licensing. Um, so I'd like to think there'll be a lot more sustainable businesses around because of embracing licensing systems, um, still embracing GPL, but just being smarter around business and how you can earn those renewal fees year on um, to justify that future development that goes into your product. Great question, thank you. Anyone else would like to ask uh, Mark a question? Don't be shy. Didn't want the front door, Nick, I'll get this one. <laughs> you look a bit out of breath there, are you okay? <laughs> Uh, just one thing I've always been told is that the, the American way of thinking is everything is out and open and everyone knows your business, your clients, how much revenue and so on and so on. Whereas in South Africa, we're very much, you know, we keep it tight to the chest. I'm not saying it's a good thing, but it's just the way people see us. Now, your whole being open and, you know, sharing everything and, and all of that, it's very much an American mindset. But you as a South African, have you not stayed up at night thinking, you know, oh Lord, something could go wrong or we're going to lose our market traction because we're so open has it ever worried you as a South African who tends to keep things tight to the chest? Or uh, do you find that this whole, people are embracing your openness and it, it's actually building a stronger business? 
Yeah, I mean, that's a great question. Uh, I think it's specifically around being South African, it's, you know, entrepreneurial appetite and, and being a business owner, you know, your sort of risk strategy. And, and we've, you know, had incredible learnings over the years as to, you know, what GPL really is meant and, you know, what it means and, and what it enables. And a few years ago when Matt Monolweg was, you know, really trying to push hard to get commercial companies to adopt the GPL, we were afraid. Um, and a lot of companies were afraid because they didn't quite understand, you know, the benefits of it, just saw the drawbacks. Um, but, yeah, hopefully this is, is case in point that, you know, your platform um, being GPL, obviously you get the guys that abuse that. We've got, you know, hundreds of torrent sites that you can download our extensions from. But, um, you know, the real valuable customers that we want to engage with will pay for your product. Um, and just by building out a community, it just makes it that much more difficult for competition to sort of stomp on your sort of playing ground. Thank you. Hey Matt, have you, um, with sites like GPL, have you noticed like a big drop in sales? I know, I mean, we had the same problem with people posting stuff on torrents as well. And our approach is always focus on the people that are going to want to pay for your product. But it would be interesting to see here, like, did you guys see a major drop? I mean, the problem is you're creating an awesome product, and then somebody just takes it and then charges people for updates and at like a fraction of the price. Yeah. So how do you guys deal with um, GPL Club is still up and running. Um, Woo Themes uh, dash plugins.com is still up and running, and those are up and running because they're not really affecting our market. You know, we we could go after them. We've got trademarks, and you know there is protection around GPL businesses. You've still got your trademarks that you can always um, lie on. Um, but you know, any exposure for us is good exposure. Um, and yeah, you know, you'll get some types of users who would rather pay five dollars for your entire collection that's taken years and years to build. Um, but are those the sort of guys that we want as customers? Probably not. Um, I just want to know, do you guys actively accept um, new extensions for sale on Word Themes and what advice can you give um, extension developers to get into that program? Yeah, good question there. Um, at the moment we do have somewhat of a closed marketplace on WooThemes.com. Um, our WooCommerce library of extensions we've got there, um, they get heavily audited because we support absolutely everything we sell on our site. It's our team of support officers that are uh, supporting that product, um, obviously relaying feedback to the, the developers who have built it, but you know that's all down to trust that we've built with these guys and invited them in. Um, as I said, there's plenty of opportunity. You don't need to sell through us. There's a huge market on uh, Theme Forest Code Canyon, and and we really respect the guys that don't ask the perm permission necessarily, um, but prove their markets, and then you know we'll, we'll definitely engage with those users. And over time, we definitely want to open up our marketplace more and more. Um, but we just want to do things right and learn from sort of the pitfalls of the existing marketplaces, I think. Thank you, great question. We've just uh, got time for about one more question for Mark, if anyone would like to ask him something burning in, your, in the back of your mind. Now's your chance. Sure. Sorry, another one. Um, what, um, when selecting a payment solution, what is there to look for? And is there anything you should demand out of your payment gateway? And what do you guys use for your payment solution, if I can ask? So. Yeah, good question. And um, yeah, we've got support officers who are best salespeople on these sort of topics. It all depends largely on where you are and what your specific requirements are as a store. Um, us at WooThemes, we use PayPal. Um, I'm sure a lot of you read about our horrific experience. Um, with a credit card leak previously. Um, and yeah, we've decided to go completely off-site for now in PayPal. Um, as we said, you know, our, our user base is largely American um, and PayPal is a solution that just about anyone can use. Um, so it, it's been a great uh, solution for us. In South Africa, it's great to see the payment gateways, PayFast, um, Peach Payments, all these guys really trying to innovate and, 
and uh, make for you know great e-commerce opportunities for for stores in South Africa. And um, yeah, I know Peach Payments with their subscriptions. You know that's always been a limiting factor here in South Africa, supporting subscriptions. Um, and guys like Nick Sox now using that and, and proving that here in South Africa um, those models can work. But yeah, it does largely depend on, on your requirements and we've got loads of resources available um, and guys to help pick the best solution for you. But we're really trying to build out those educational resources because uh, there is a sea of um, availability in terms of yeah, specifically payment gateways to choose from. Um, and luckily it's quite easy to sort of swap between but you want to try and get that right from the start. Great, thank you guys for your questions. Uh, please put your hands together again for Mark Forrester. Thank you.